Good day, everyone, and thanks for joining us as we discuss an ISS National Lab Research Announcement, or NLRA, focused on technology development and applied research on the ISS National Lab. I'm Patrick O'Neill, Public Affairs and Outreach Lead for the ISS National Laboratory, and I'll be one of your hosts for today's webinar. The purpose of these webinars is to help educate those of you who might be interested in submitting Step 1 concept summaries for ISS National Lab Research Announcements. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be available on the ISS National Lab website. Additionally, at the end of this webinar, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions. The Center for the Advancement of Science in Space, or CASIS, is the manager of the ISS National Lab and has served as such since 2011 through a cooperative agreement with NASA. In fact, last year NASA extended this cooperative agreement for CASIS to manage the ISS National Lab through 2027. Each year, the ISS National Lab puts forth a variety of research announcements focused on targeted areas, soliciting project concepts from researchers, companies, innovators, and educators alike. ISS National Lab research announcements enable greater access to the ISS, a unique platform in low Earth orbit, bringing scientific value back to people here on Earth, building commerce in space, and inspiring the next generation of researchers and explorers. And with that, I'd like to introduce Munir Alafranji, Commercial Innovation Manager and Technology Lead for the ISS National Lab. Looking forward to you walking us through this research announcement and providing information as well as recommendations for viewers who decide to submit a Step 1 concept summary for consideration. Munir, good afternoon, and uh, again, excited to learn more about this opportunity. Thank you very much, Patrick. Today is a very exciting day because, to your point, it gives us a chance to provide some insight into the research announcement focused on technology development and applied research leveraging the ISS National Lab. So let's get into today's presentation and dig a bit deeper. As this is a request for Step 1 concept summaries, I want to highlight the essential elements of what we're looking for with this research announcement and answer some of your questions. During today's meeting, we'll dive into the NLRA process and technology development objectives and look at some existing ISS National Lab research examples. We'll then provide a short overview of facilities on board the ISS that are relevant to technology development research, and then highlight both the process and timeline of this research opportunity, along with some details about the award itself. Then, as Patrick mentioned, we'll have a question and answer session. Let's talk about this research announcement that is focused on technology advancement and applied research leveraging the ISS National Lab. We're seeking projects in the areas of applied research and development, translational medicine, technology readiness level, TRL, maturation, and technology demonstration on the ISS. Ideally, these projects will have clear pathways to practical applications that can provide tangible value back to the organization doing the work and ultimately back to the nation. Munir, it, it sounds like you're, you're looking for research that might drive economic benefits, either directly or indirectly. Absolutely. For example, you might test a product in the space environment that resolves a key technological hurdle, which then allows you to take that product to the marketplace. Or maybe your space-based research enhances and expands the market reach for that product. If you're familiar with technology readiness levels and you speak that language, you should be considering maturation of technology that is currently somewhere around TRL4 or higher and looking to raise that TRL. Maturing three TRL levels is pretty difficult, but this is just a suggestion and not set in stone. However, if raising TRL levels is the major aim of your proposed research, your step one concept summary should directly address your current TRL and TRL raising goal for your project. Thinking in terms of your proposal, it is a good idea to have a line of sight to commercial application. Think in terms of enabling a commercial offering to an end user after you concluded your work on the ISS. The idea is that this research announcement is very broad. Your research could be something to do with a supercomputer, artificial intelligence, automation, robotics, semiconductors, remote sensing, biofabrication, thin film deposition, exotic optical fibers, or testing new therapeutics. We're excited to see your ideas through this process. Now is a good time to talk about why we conduct research in space. What does space offer? 
The ISS National Lab provides the opportunity for scientific and technological discoveries under the unique and persistent conditions of spaceflight, which you cannot replicate on Earth. I like to tell researchers that removing the vector of gravity from your research allows you to see your system with a brand new lens of discovery. Let's talk about the primary reasons to do work in space by highlighting the key advantages. The extreme environment available through the ISS National Lab may be useful for accelerating materials durability testing by exposing materials to the harsh conditions of space. These include extreme heat and cold cycling, ultra-high vacuum, atomic oxygen, high energy radiation, and debris impact, all of which can be harnessed during the experimentation and testing. The space station also provides a unique vantage point from which to study our planet, as the station orbit covers 90% of the world's populated areas. Lastly, sustained microgravity has proven to have profound impact on both physical and living systems. These advantages of the ISS National Lab benefit a wide variety of R&D-focused areas. Your Step 1 concept summary should very clearly state why you need to conduct your research on the space station. Please take note of this very important point. Before we get into research announcement specifics, I'd like to share a couple of research examples that have successfully utilized the ISS National Lab to advance technology. OrbitFab partnered with the ISS National Lab to launch its first project in 2018, seeking to test technology that supported plans to build gas stations in space, basically an in-orbit propellant supply chain. The video shown here shows NASA astronaut Christina Cook spinning a flex tank during testing for the FURFI project on board the ISS in 2019. Engineering the company's hardware for in-orbit spacecraft refueling required understanding tank dynamics in space and designing pump systems that would work in microgravity. The result of this ISS investigation successfully showed that OrbitFab's technology could support a wide range of propellants for spacecraft thrusters. Orbital Sidekick is another example I'd like to highlight. Their innovation is hyperspectral imaging platform designed to monitor Earth's solids, liquids, and gases. This effort has the potential to provide a more advanced imaging system than traditional satellites. The platform captures unique chemical fingerprints of targets and has the potential to provide a very detailed understanding of a landscape which is essential for monitoring underground structures and pipelines. The platform could also inform precision farming and improve resource management, help map out oil spills and detect gas leaks, as well as help in the monitoring of prevention of wildfires. Orbital Sidekick secured $10 million earlier this year to provide monitoring services to the oil and gas industry. We want to help your innovation achieve this kind of success through this current research announcement. With these examples in mind, let's talk about the facilities on board the ISS that can support research awarded through this research opportunity. Where might applicants find information on hardware and facilities available to support their research goals? The ISS National Lab offers state-of-the-art hardware and facilities, providing a wide range of research equipment and systems enabling advanced R&D and technology demonstration. I encourage applicants to review the available facilities using the links provided here. You'll also find these links in the research announcement instructions available for download on the research announcement webpage. I encourage applicants to reach out to our operations team with any questions about available hardware and facilities. In addition, we ask all applicants to identify an implementation partner they'd like to work with and start a dialogue about project goals. Implementation partners are organizations that have expertise in translating proposed work for the ISS environment. It is important to connect with an implementation partner during step one preparation. I encourage you to visit our implementation partner database and begin engaging in conversations with these organizations early. There's additional information about implementation partners as well as available hardware on the station in the solicitation documents. You'll want to get a realistic estimate of what your project might cost, especially if you're new to space. So a conversation with an implementation partner could be a very helpful way to start. Since we're talking about cost, this is the perfect time to discuss funding. Funding for the specific research announcement is 600,000 with the expectation of two to four awards. 
You're expected to cover direct costs such as your time, your team's time, your equipment, fabrication costs, and testing that you would do on the ground to prepare for space. As I mentioned, when it comes to doing space-based research on the ISS, it's essential to have an implementation partner to work along your side. The funding set aside for this research announcement is to assist with implementation partner costs. Launched to the ISS, the cost of any crew resources that you may need to perform your experiment and resources to get your samples or data home to Earth will be completely covered as well. Once we select an award, the time that it takes before your experiment flies to the ISS depends largely on the complexity of what you're trying to do, as well as the availability of supply vehicles. Generally, the period varies from 12 to 18 months, and project completion is expected approximately three years from award date. Thanks for that deep dive on funding, Munir. I'm sure most viewers are now wondering, how does someone even get considered for funding through this research announcement? The ISS National Lab has a two-step submission process that begins with step one concept summary. Take your time and read through all of step one concept summary instructions. During the concept summary review, we conduct a high-level review for operational feasibility and for scientific and technical scope. And we also do a preliminary compliance review. If you pass that step, we will contact you and invite you to submit a full proposal. It is important to note that there may be advantages to submitting your step one concept summary early. For example, if you don't get selected, you may be notified prior to the deadline, providing you with feedback and an opportunity to digest the feedback, make alterations to your concept summary, and resubmit for another attempt. And if your concept is submitted early and is selected, you'll be notified earlier, giving you more time to start working on the next step, which is the full proposal. Everything we've covered so far regarding the research announcement is all detailed in the downloadable documents and instructions available on the Research Opportunity webpage listed below. In fact, there's more details in those documents than what I'm sharing with you now. If you're interested in submitting a step one concept summary, I encourage you to go to the webpage, look at our resources, and download the instruction documents. Excellent. Is there also information available regarding the evaluation process? Yes. Details on the evaluation methodology can be found in the Proposal Evaluator Instructions for this research announcement, which is one of the documents contained in the zipped files available for download. As you prepare your Step 1 concept summary for submission to this ISS National Lab research announcement, we recommend you keep in mind a few tips that we hope you find beneficial. Use the available resources. The current Opportunity web pages have helpful resources in the sidebar and at the bottom of the pages, so please take a look at all the related links available to you. Connect with an implementation partner early. The scope of work and budget that you receive from your selected implementation partner is critical. Write to the evaluation criteria. The instructions outline the evaluation criteria that will be used to evaluate your concept summary. Address all the evaluation criteria. Proposals that do not address all of the criteria or address them poorly are very likely to receive low evaluation ratings. Lastly, submit a compliant concept. Ensure that your research objectives are within the scope of this specific research announcement. Remember, we're available to answer questions in advance of your step one concept summary submission and during your step two proposal writing should you be invited to submit one. You can email us with your questions at any time. In fiscal year 2023, we've planned three cycles or distinct research opportunity announcements for technology advancement and applied research that leverages the ISS National Lab. This is the third of the three cycles. This research announcement went live on May 15th, and step one concept summaries are due by August 7th. Concept summaries that score well will be invited to submit a full proposal, step two, in our two-step application process. Full proposals will be due by October 9th. Take advantage of the online documents and resources, pay close attention to the instructions, and email us should you have any questions. That's it for this research announcement. Our team is here to support you. Our website has all the solicitation documents and instructions 
as well as a host of resources to help you submit the best concept summary possible. Thanks, Munir. To our audience, remember that the goal of ISS National Lab activities is to bring value and impact to the U.S. economy and taxpayers by benefiting life here on Earth. Munir, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. The pleasure is mine, Patrick. So what's next? Are we ready to answer some questions? Definitely. Uh, in just a minute, we'll be taking questions from you, the webinar attendees. Stay tuned. Hello, and thank you for attending today's webinar for National Lab Research Announcement, or NLRA 2023-8, focused on technology advancement and applied research leveraging the ISS National Lab. Uh, we are now entering the portion of the webinar to take your questions. However, in order to submit your questions, please do so through the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen in the Zoom. Uh, additionally, I would like to introduce those on behalf of the ISS National Lab that are ready to answer your questions. Uh, first and foremost, as you might have saw, uh, Munir Alafranji, who is the Commercial Innovation Manager and Technology Lead. We have Dan Blaitler, Director of Portfolio Management. We have Derek Dufflo, Operations Project Manager. And we have Philip Iris, Program Director, Advanced Materials. So that being said, uh, what do you say we get started with the very first question? And Munir, I'm looking at some of the ones that have already been populated. Looks like you're going to be pretty busy early on. Uh, first and foremost, what is the budget range? Uh, for proposals? Yeah, we get this question a lot. So uh, funding through the this particular NLRA is allocated to support implementation partner uh, mission integration and operation costs only. We mentioned that, but I'll mention it again. All other project costs will be covered by the offerer. Uh, there is no cap on the amount of funding that could be requested. However, funding is limited. I'd like to remind uh, proposers of that. Uh, the level of funding requested will be a factor uh, in the project selection. So projects with no cost or low cost will receive priority over high cost proposals. And uh, again, the total budget for this cycle is 600,000. Thank you, Munir. Uh, next question, and I, I think I might be able to run in and answer this one. Will the slides be made available? Uh, the recording of this webinar will be available on the research announcement webpage. So uh, we, we plan to have that up in the coming days. So uh, recommend other people to go and take a look at it then. Um, again, Munir, this one might be for you. If a product is already or nearly in commercial production, can it still be considered for the NLRA process? Sure thing. Yeah, uh, we are interested in seeing um, concepts from offerers who are looking to make new strides or modifications make their technology more efficient or more effective, or to break into a new market such as the, uh, the space market. So uh, we'd we'll be excited to read your proposal. Absolutely. Uh, next question for you, Munir. Is there any special consideration for very early stage companies with exciting technologies that might not score high on TRL levels? Yeah, this is a good question. Um, the NLRA uh, provides guidance on TRL um, uh, but it's just guidance, so it should not prevent offers from submitting a concept. However, in the proposal, we do want offers to be clear on the uh, projected TRL at project completion and to discuss the prior work that has been done to support the uh, technology. Um, and I do want to note that it is important to include the market analysis for the technology and how it's going to benefit humanity. Show us that you've done your research in that area. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Munir. Uh, well, Dan, we're now going to go and kick it to you, I think, for a couple of questions. Uh, this is a, this is an important one. Can you describe the evaluation process? Sure. Uh, the evaluation process is uh, fully described in the evaluation guide that is one of the downloadable documents on our website. But just fundamentally, it includes a scientific and technical merit as well as an economic merit uh, portion. Uh, as well as uh, ops feasibility. The uh, scientific and technical merit is, for, is performed by uh, external subject matter experts that we recruit and all external evaluators uh, sign a, 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 a non-disclosure non and a conflict of interest statement. So uh, we tend to use evaluators that don't have preconceived notions about the companies or, 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 or people that they're evaluating. Perfect. Uh, and next question for you, approximately how long is the time between submitting a step one concept summary and receiving an invitation to submit a step two full proposal? So 
uh, from the due date, uh, we we tend tend to get a lot of concepts right at the end of the of the of the cycle. Uh, so depending on the number we get, we try to turn those around in in two to three weeks. Uh, sometimes it takes as many as four weeks, but if that happens, we extend the uh, proposal timeline, the proposal due to, due timeline. We like to give you at least forty five days, if not sixty days, to produce a, a full proposal. But it takes about about two to four weeks. And building on that question, what happens if I am not invited to submit a step two? So if you're not invited, uh, you will get feedback uh, and you will have an opportunity to resubmit to a future uh, uh, NLRA. Uh, we strongly encourage you to review the feedback and heed the feedback. Uh, we've had a few people come back with the exact same concept at a future solicitation and uh, they are just as unsuccessful in the future solicitation as they are in the past. So please review the feedback and incorporate that into your into your next version of your of your concept. Perfect. Thanks, Dan. Uh, Derek, I'm thinking this question might be for you. Should we have an implementation partner in place at the concept summary phase? Hi, Patrick. Uh, yes, we we encourage everyone to make uh, contact with their implementation partner as soon as possible. That step one would be a great time to do that. Uh, be in tour, you know, obtain information that like your schedule and cost of the actual project. Uh, we would like to see that. And the implementation partner is a good person to give you that information. You. All right. Munir and Philip, uh, will cases accept proposals for projects involving human biological tissue samples? Yeah, yes, uh, we would. Uh, Philip, if you'd like to dive a little deeper into that. Yeah, um, yeah, we would, but uh, it would depend on where the tissue samples come from and, and if consent has been provided. Uh, we just have to make sure that all regulatory requirements are met. Munir, anything else to add? I think that sums it up. Um, if you have, uh, you know, without sharing your secret sauce, if you want to reach out to us uh, directly to uh, tell us a little bit more about your, expand on your question a little more, we'd be happy to uh, respond to you. And again, you can reach us at ops at issnationallab.org. That's Oscar Papa Sierra at issnationallab.org. You beat me to the punch on that. But, all right, so Derek, I got another one I think that uh, is applicable for you. Uh, would it be acceptable to propose to reuse our hardware that has previously been on the ISS and was funded through a NASA grant? Uh, yes, it would be. So it would be acceptable. We would want to know um, what that hardware is. So we want to, for you to document um, which hardware it is and who is the current owner of the hardware, um, if it's not the offer. And if the offer is not the owner, uh, we as cases would need to contact the current owner to ensure that the hardware is available for the time the proposed experiment. Uh, next question, I think, is for Munir. Um, if a terrestrial Earth TRL is at nine, and if the product could be converted to a space adaptable product, uh, what would be the minimum TRL? Um, let's see here. So the desired TRL for flight experiments would be for the in-orbit demonstration to raise the uh, TRL technology readiness level. Uh, from four or higher to six or higher. That's kind of the sweet spot, but a little lower or a little higher is still going to be uh, very, very much considered. Uh, I do urge you to please uh, reference uh, the scope and goals for this particular NLRA for more information. Okay. And, and we've, we've gotten a couple of, uh, of notes about specific types of facilities that might be available through this uh, research announcement. Uh, as, as Munir talked about earlier, I highly recommend uh, for any of those types of questions on specific types of facilities that might be available uh, to reach out to ops at issnationallab.org and, uh, and we can vet those questions and get back to you accordingly. Uh, Munir, another question for you. Uh, is there a recommended or required project start date? So our goal is to announce awards for this uh, NLRA in December 2023. Uh, the projected start date for uh, awarded projects would likely be uh, in January 2024. Okay, and then uh, sticking with uh, with you on this one, can a principal investigator be a non-U.S. person or have a non-U.S. partner? Okay, we definitely get this question often. Uh, so cases uh, 
can only accept proposals and, uh, and award projects to U.S. persons at U.S. entities. PIs or co-PIs must be U.S. persons. Uh, the offer has uh, sole responsibility to ensure compliance with U.S. E export laws, and it is recommended that proposing organizations consult with an expert professional prior to submitting a proposal. And then one more for you for the time being. Uh, will the ISS National Lab accept the NSF biographical template? Uh, NSF biographical template. Um, so, yeah, uh, offers can use any format they choose uh, for uh, biographical sketches, uh, including NSF format. We've seen that before. We, it's very acceptable, yes. Derek, this is, uh, I think, one that is perfect for you. Uh, what are the specific safety requirements for experiments conducted within the ISS? So there is uh, quite a bit of uh, safety requirements that are required to go up to ISS. I mean, they're put there to keep the crew and vehicle safe from any anomalies. So there will be a microscope on your proposed experiment to see um, what kind of safeties are going to be flown. Uh, for example, like batteries, lithium ion batteries, um, you know, they, they can fly, but they're gonna be go through a testing program to ensure that they'll be safe for use. Um, every project goes through kind of an independent uh, safety review and really the implementation partners that you choose will kind of help you through that process and assist with any of the hazard assessment materials uh, that might be involved in that experiment. And uh, you know, we as a payload operations team are always available to at uh, ops at issnational.org. Perfect, thank you very much. Munir, is SAM registration required to submit either a concept or full proposal? Yes, for a proposal to be selected for award offers must be registered uh, in SAM.gov. Uh, so registration is required in order in order for your business uh, to accept uh, the funds. We've gotten this question a couple of times too, uh, but you know, is there a place where we can find previously submitted or approved concepts so we can avoid duplication? Um, we, we encourage everyone to go to our website and, and take a look at uh, Previous announcements or uh, projects that have been selected, those are public. Um, so that we definitely encourage you to go to issnationallab.org. Uh, Philip, this one might be for you. Uh, hi there. Hi there, back. Uh, I was wondering if you might be able to advise on what is meant by translational medicine. Yeah, uh, good examples might be validation of accelerated disease models using cell or organism based models. Uh, analyzing macromolecular structures for structure-based drug design, uh, demonstration of novel drug delivery and diagnostic devices. Uh, but this isn't an exhaustive list. Uh, so we're open to new and innovative innovative ideas. So I'd encourage you to propose whatever you, uh, you know, whatever good idea you have. Perfect. And let's keep it with you. Uh, we are planning on submitting a a project that involves using plant-based medicines. And I'm wondering if this type of medicine may meet the criteria for translational medicine. Uh, yes, I would consider this translational medicine. Um, I would just encourage you when writing your proposal to make sure you justify the need for the space environment um, and then make sure you write to the evaluation criteria. Fantastic. Uh, it's always fun when a question might be directed to me for a change. So. Uh, once selected, what does ISS National Lab do to further promote your research on the space station? Uh, this could assist in commercialization. Uh, as, as the public affairs now reach feed for the ISS National Lab, I always enjoy working with our research partners to talk about what they're sending, why they are sending, uh, how we can reach new audiences so that other people can be inspired about potentially becoming part of this growing research community. So, uh, you would certainly have at your disposal, at the very minimum, the communications department from the ISS National Lab to communicate about what you're doing again. Uh, there's also going to be a variety of other conferences, events, launches themselves, uh, where we can talk about your science. Uh, one example, and I'll throw in the first plug for it, is every year we have the annual ISS Research and Development Conference. This year, it's going to be taking place in Seattle, Washington from July 31st through August 3rd. So again, that's a great place for us to showcase what's happening on station, the opportunities that are forthcoming, and uh, you know what's what's kind of next on the on the docket. So with that, uh, Dan, K 
can we submit another concept to this call if we have one proposal under review in the last call, um, in, in the last version of this research announcement? Uh, the concept, however, is different. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have many PIs that have multiple uh, projects active at, a, at at any one time. So yes, you can submit a, a, another concept, a different concept uh, to a different solicitation or even to the same solicitation. Uh, of course, you'll be competing against yourself if you're within the same solicitation. But yes, absolutely, you can submit. You can have more than one active project at a time. Perfect. Uh, Derek, I think we've got a couple of them for you. Uh, do I need the help of an implementation partner? I think we already touched a little bit on this. Do I need the help of an implementation partner to send my experiment to the ISS if I don't need any extra hardware from said implementation partner? We always are going to encourage you to contact an implementation partner. Um, we can definitely discuss if you have uh, your hardware already built, but the implementation partner will also help you go through the safety that we talked about earlier and through a lot of verification testing, pre-flight testing that's needed to go up. And it looks like we get a couple more questions relative to the implementation partners, and that obviously it just goes to demonstrate how critical they are to this whole process. But uh, can you elaborate on what an implementation partner is and uh, where we could go about contacting them? Sure. Well, definitely go to our um, website, right? And they have we have an IP portal implementation partner portal. And there is a list of companies there uh, that you can go through and look at what they have to offer. And uh, be, you should be able to contact them through there. Uh, if you can't contact them for some reason, please contact us and we'll try to help you get a hold of them. Um, you know, Implementation Partner is basically a company that uh, is an expert as far as having hardware getting launched to the space station. So if your project needs uh, a piece of hardware to contain or for any other reason to interface with the space station and they're the people that we have uh, entrusted with that responsibility. Perfect and uh, what I would also say too is it looks like we're starting to wind down with some of the questions so if there if there's questions that have not yet been answered uh, please feel free to uh, to insert them in the Q&A so that that way we can uh, we can take a look at them quickly while we're all here. Uh, Dan this one might be for you. Uh, for step one, is it necessary to include biographical sketches? Uh, it is not. It is not. Uh, your management approach is part of step one. Um, and so if the, uh, if the personnel that you are, uh, that will be participating in the, in the project are relevant to uh, perhaps in enhancing the, the concept and moving it to a full proposal, by all means include their names, but that's not, a, not an essential part of uh, step one. And then Munir, looks like we got a couple of them that uh, that are in the queue for you. Uh, will a non-hardware system be considered for award? For example, a software application for commercial agriculture using onboard remote sensing data. Yes, uh, it will be considered. We do send algorithms to the ISS frequently. So definitely move forward if this is uh, what you're working on. Great. Uh, good question here. Does does your funding uh, come to us as the applicant or go to our selected implementation partner? I think that that's, you know, either Dan or Munir could answer that one. Sure. Um, the funding can go either, it, since the funding is is only for implementation costs for the solicitation, the funding, we can, we can contract directly with the implementation partner on your behalf. Uh, but if you have an existing relationship with them and you want to manage the funding yourself, that can be arranged as well. So it's really an either or. Okay, and this is the last question that I have in the queue right now is in, uh, see, Philip, Derek, this could be for either, for either one of you perhaps, can we propose mouse models for testing therapeutics? I would say that we offer other solicitations where that would be more appropriate, but we don't, I mean, go ahead and send in your concept and we'll see. Okay. And with that, we'll, uh, we'll give it one or two more ticks and then uh, get ready to wrap things up. Yeah, these have been pretty good questions. And again, if you want to dive a little bit deeper on the specifics, feel free to reach out to us through our email and uh, we'll arrange a meeting and, and, and help uh, guide you through our process. Perfect. Well, thanks, Munir. Thanks uh, to the panelists. Thanks for all of you that have joined us for today's uh, webinar focused on technology advancement and applied research 
leveraging the ISS National Lab. Uh, again, thank you all for, for taking the time to be with us today. Um, as has been communicated multiple times, if we didn't get to your question today, uh, you can reach out to us at ops at issnationallab.org, and we will get to them all in a timely manner. Um, and then again, from a timely perspective relative to step ones in concept summaries, they are due by April 17th, 2023. And as we mentioned it a little bit earlier, uh, for those interested in meeting with and networking alongside fellow space station researchers and partners, the 12th annual ISS R&D conference will be in Seattle, Washington, uh, and it will be from July 31st through August 3rd. So visit ISSconference.org to register now, and we hope that uh, we will see everyone in Seattle. With that, uh, again, I want to thank everyone for joining us, and by all means, uh, please, uh, best of luck in, in, in submitting your concepts, and uh, again, we'll, uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much.